guys, welcome to Mini Life. I am your host, Mini Mike. Thank you for tuning back in. If you have not subscribed and you are new here, thank you for joining. This week we have an exciting interview with YouTube Sensation Classic Mini DIY. If you are a fan of Classic Mini Restoration, you've likely come across him. Going down the YouTube rabbit hole late at night, perhaps. He's uh, amassed about 25,000 subscribers. I think a little bit more at this time of uh, video in this. Uh, he's become a go-to source for many enthusiasts looking for tips, tricks on how to restore, maintain their beloved vehicles. In our interview, we chat with the classic mini DIY about how he got started in the world of mini restoration, his favorite pro uh, projects he's tackled so far, what he's currently working on. He even shares some tips and tricks if you're interested in getting into Classic Minis. And he gave us a sneak peek of uh, future projects coming up. So it's going to be a good show. Thank you for tuning in again. Um, and enjoy the show. Here it is. All right. I think we are live. Special guest. You may know him. If you don't know him, you should know him. The YouTube <laughs> sensation, Cole from Classic Mini DIY. Applause. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Cole, I appreciate you being on here, man. Thank you so much. Cole actually yeah, like, let's go. Like, live mini podcast. I want to be on. Let's do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's kind of I, IMO I get I get something in my mind I'm like I gotta do it <laughs> that's hey yeah no I agree I'm the same way I was talking with my buddy the, actually that's kind of how I revamped the podcast I had one back in like grad school and then my buddy f that I know from grad school started one recently we were just talking about it, how we just like once we we kind of get obsessed with things we just deep, <laughs> deep dive and yes. just want to get going <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, I was deep diving uh, last night and this morning. You know, doing you know, trying to do a little little research. I'm not the, you know, um, best interview. So I was trying to do a little research. Like, when did I when did I first start watching classic mini DIY and learn about you? And I think <laughs> it was I, it had to have been when I first got mine back in like 2015 or 16 or you know somewhere right around there. Yeah. And so you were like one of the OG viewers. Yeah, and I was scrolling back, and it was, you know how, like, uh, it shows, like, all of the, the videos you've played, and they're all, like, red, 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 and then I got back <laughs> to your first video, and it was, like, wasn't even mini-related, it was, like, 10 seconds long in, like, 2008 or 12 or something. Yeah, yeah, it was probably, like, a video of my dog or something, like, shaking his... <laughs> shaking his butt or something in slow motion but to, <laughs> i think to my surprise i think like the second one it said like my mini my mini's engine first start and it was uh just like on the ground <laughs> yep nice, nice. Yes. I mean, we'll, we'll yep. definitely get into all the iterations of your engine but um no i thank you for being <laughs> on here man this is awesome yeah it's a pleasure i you know we've we you and i have chatted off and on for years as you said since like 2015 i think you know we've chatted on instagram on youtube i've seen you pop up here and there and then of course you've started really you know kind of becoming a, a figure in the mini community as well so um it's been cool to see that from my side um but also you've been you know good guy to talk to throughout this whole throughout all this period so I, as soon as i saw the podcast i'm like i, I gotta get on i gotta talk to him Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> Listen, Cole, I am pretty Insta famous nowadays. I did just get paid fifty dollars uh, this past month for Instagram Reels, so you know. Oh my God! <laughs> Although Watch I haven't out. got paid yet, because apparently you have to make a hundred dollars before you get paid. <laughs> oh really? So it's like, oh yeah, we'll give you fifty bucks, but you have to keep going in order to get a payout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Classic. whatever. So we have to wait for them to give me another like Instagram Reel bonus thing for me. <laughs> nice nice it's funny yeah my yeah. wife uh my wife was like hey i'm getting paid on instagram she has a shell page and she uh. randomly i don't know she, we were on a vacation uh, in sanibel and it's like shell okay. he heaven and she randomly just blew up and she has like ten thousand followers on this shell page and she was what? they started like offering her like you know deals and <laughs> stuff to get paid not like it's a lot but it's uh it's funny yeah. it's funny 
yeah. yeah. It's funny how the things just kind of pop up all of a sudden. Like the, I, I get like random stuff. They're like, you want to advertise like jewelry? I'm like, y'all clearly haven't watched any of my videos. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm just probably some, I hit some threshold for you guys to send me a message. But like, there's some, there's some good stuff out there, you know, and companies want, want people to use their products. So, you know, it's a good place to be in. It, it, it's really neat. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's funny. Uh, you probably never thought that would happen back in, you know, 2000, no. whatever that was when you posted that first no. video that <laughs> you'd be getting jewelry ads, uh, sponsorships. Right. <laughs> no, definitely not. I, I, when I started the channel, it was just like, I, I learning how to do this stuff. I want to make videos on it. And like, it was definitely a, a whole new experience, like how to be in front of a camera, how to not say, um, all the time, which is still a struggle. I, I chop a lot of those out, um, mm -hmm. as well as like all of my, uh, foul language when I'm smashing my hands <laughs> in the engine bay or something. Uh, I don't know that people know, but I'm a, I'm a sailor, uh, in the garage. <laughs> you would but never, it... you do a good job editing then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so no, what, it's, uh... it's been a journey. What got you into the classic mini? Did your you know father or family were they into cars? Did how did you pick the classic mini? Yeah, um, funny enough, like my dad, he was passively into cars. You know, he grew up in you know he was young in the in the sixties and and seventies, and so you know he grew up with like Camaros and Mustangs. Um, you know, he had a sixty eight Camaro, which is probably what he considers his favorite car that he's had, but. Overall, my family's not really been into cars. Um, I kind of picked them up. Weirdly, it's like not even a, a driver's car or anything, but I had a Honda Element as my first car. Um, nice. And like I got super into like changing things, adding sound systems, you know, uh, putting beer tires on it. You're doing all the kind of like stuff that you learn about uh, as you first get into stuff. And then fast forward a few years, had a Mini Cooper S, uh, 2007 and, um, you know, turbocharged, got a taste of that. And then I'm like, Oh, this is based off of an old car, a classic car. And then I'm like, that's, that's what I want. And so then I just kind of set as, as we talked about earlier, got dead set on getting one and then mm -hmm. found one in Canada. <laughs> oh, wow. Canada. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, it I was. Uh, did, I think I remember you telling the story before, but for those that don't know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I I don't know if I've told the whole story anywhere, but the um, so the car is a 1960. It's originally a um, Morris Mini Minor, um, and it was ironically a very light blue. I think they call it Clipper Blue. That's mm -hmm. in, and it was a Canadian car. Um, a lot of people think it was, it's a British car cause it's, I have, it has set up as a right hand drive, but, um, you know, I, I swapped that. I drove up to, it was in Barrie, Ontario. It had like, it was absolutely just a rat, rat nest, like no floors, no Love boot it. floor, like, um, but it had an engine in it. And the guy said, I think it runs. And I got the whole, whole thing for 1500 bucks in Whoa, like 2000. Right. Yeah. Um, back in, I don't know, it was 2014, 12, I don't remember it. I've had the car about 12 years now and like it, that, I mean, that was a pretty good deal even then, um, got it home and it was a 1275 in it. It was not the original 850. It was kind of like a surprise. I didn't know what I was getting. And then just years later, here we are. <laughs> wow. I love that. Yeah. I don't know if you, um, listen to the first episode i kind of told my stories about how i got mine and my first one was basically a i got a free motorcycle on craigslist and then i traded it for the mini so essentially nice. I, you know i probably put a few hundred bucks into the motorcycle so i essentially got a free first mini and then that cooper yep. s i picked picked up last year i got for 1500 oh bucks <laughs> granted yeah, that one that... not running and driving <laughs> I'm so jealous of that. Like, it's, it, when you sent me those pictures, I was just, I remember being just floored by it. Like, I'm so excited for you and that, that project is going to be awesome. Yeah. It's um, you know, it's going to be a fun one. And I, I'm trying to remember, it has an engine with it, right? It, it has, it's like a complete car. It's essentially complete. The only thing it's missing is a lot of the interior. I mean, it, it doesn't have like any gauges mm -hmm. or seats or uh, carpet or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it has. Nice pretty much everything to make it run and drive um 
that's cool know, for the that's most really, part really yeah. cool yeah that's a that's a just a uh, I I saw you put kind of phrased it a certain way. It's a once in a lifetime kind of project. Like you you find at an amazing price, and like you know, it's you could keep it forever. You could restore it to you know pristine and probably make a fortune off of it. But like I don't know, that's the kind of thing you keep. To me, yeah, I mean, it could even be a quick flip right now. But it's just like for me, it was uh, my dream car. You know, a lot of people yeah. have. You know their dream cars and mine was always a classic cooper s mark one yeah and i just i had my doubts the whole way but it turned out to be <laughs> real so <laughs> it, might as well it's gonna be a, a journey oh yeah oh yeah and now yeah. i can't get rid of the first one because it was the first one so no 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 no, no. It, it, it's gonna be cool so I'm, one thing that i have experienced with people who have ridden in kind of later cars even not even that much later, but a little bit later cars, they find that the Mark ones are just so much more raw. Like mm -hmm. it in, in so many kind of subtle ways, like when it's running everything, you're just really connected to the car. You're really connected to everything that's happening even more so than the, than the later ones, which you're already like that. Like you get into right. those and you're just, it's like an experience. So I ugh. can't imagine because mine, my current one, it's, uh, you know, it was an SPI. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. later it's early nineties. Um, and it's pretty raw. I don't know if it's because it's <laughs> pretty much stripped inside. It has like carpet and seats. There's no headline or anything like that. Um, yes. But it's yeah. rowdy. I don't know if that's why, but I can't <laughs> imagine. Yeah. And the, the different gearbox, the, the remote change I've heard is, oh. is really like tight and kind of because it's so good. To the car. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm excited. I'm excited. So, I don't recall it. your gearbox, the one that's in the Cooper S. Is it a three synchro box? I think I remember you mentioning it was. Yeah, it's a three. Th uh, uh, from what I've been told, I haven't opened it up because that engine okay. that it came with is like brand new, rebuilt. Um, well, not, wow. You know, okay. I mean, it's a it's yeah, all yeah. the original. It's the original Cooper S engine, but it's rebuilt. Um, but I need to take it apart because it was sitting without like the valve cover and the spark plugs, and it had like sawdust uh. everywhere. But I pulled yeah. the head and it looked so clean. ported, polished, clean, <laughs> big valves, everything. I was like, oh, oh my man. god! I think it's a, it's got like the plus twenty pistons. I yep. think so. We'll see what the gearbox actually is. I don't know because the original Cooper S gears are um, sitting on the shelf. So <sighs> man, my, they, they are have really hard time. to find. Yeah, yeah, I saw. I was going through the gears when my a recent gear issue, and I was like, maybe I can use some of these. I was like, oh, these are like original <laughs> gears. I was like, they're not going into this shit box. <laughs> no, so, no, 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 yeah, that's funny. Um, how did you get into maintaining, restoring, and like, where did you learn it from? You, you said your, you know, your dad was kind of passively into cars. Uh, like my dad mm -hmm. liked cars, but he never worked on cars. Um, and yeah. then when did you decide to start putting it on YouTube for somebody like me um, and my projects? Yeah. Um, I would say that I've always been kind of into doing things that involve your hands, like kind of building, assembling. I like, I, you know, I build computers in, in my free time and, um, and cars kind of became an extension of that. And I kind of just dove into it blind for, for the most part, you know, I have a, a buddy here and I think you might've talked to him a few times. Um, his name's Justin Handy. He is, um, probably one of my best friends here, you know, in Charlotte. And he's also a mini guy has a, a red mini pickup, a Moak, a, a red saloon, you know, he's, he's a mini guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he kind of like back when I first got the car, um, for lack of a better way to put it, kind of brought me under his wing, so to speak. He's a little bit older than me, but we're close to the same age. Um, and he just kind of allowed me to use his garage at the time because I lived in an apartment when I bought the car. Um, you know, it, he allowed me to use the garage to help and, and kind of restore my car there. And he did a lot of work too. Um, you know, probably I'd say 75 to 80% of the work he did at the time while allowing me to try and learn these things. And so that uh, was where I got introduced into minis, but also into the like core mechanics stuff. And then um, 
kind of moved on from there to diesel mechanics. Uh, I studied that for some time. I did not finish school for that, but um, I did work at Carolina Tractor for a little while. Um, mm-hmm. So I learned some of the like kind of best practices and, and technical stuff that comes with, you know, mechanics um, and, and like those types of things from that. And then somewhere in that mix, I honestly don't even remember exactly when I start. I'm like, you know, I know some stuff about minis that I could share. Like I know some stuff at, at a level that I could teach people. I'm going to start putting those on the videos. And then as I made more videos, I learned more stuff and then just continued to kind of like funnel what I've learned and, and into the, into the ether, the internet ether. So, um, I would say that's the kind of like short, short and sweet of it. Uh, it's been a fun journey though. Um, I think a lot of people kind of think when they see my channel, they're like, Oh, this guy knows a boatload about minis. And I think at this point I probably do know a lot of stuff about minis. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but like there's so much I don't know. And like, that's part of why I named the channel like DIY. It's about learning and doing these things yourself. Like if you go back through some of my gearbox videos, there are a few little mistakes here and there. Um, nothing that's like enormous that would cause like an explosion in your gearbox or something. But, <laughs> um, but you know, I don't know everything and it's, it's all about learning together. Yeah. And that's what's so great about YouTube and the internet. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, that's like kind of one of the questions I get all the time just from maybe family members that aren't into the cars are like, how did you do that? Like, how did you know? I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know. I just got a I hands didn't. manual and I watched Cole on, on YouTube and we figured it out together. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, uh, but now I know, and it's, it's really funny. Cause it's, I mean, that's kind of how I always was too, was, you know, working with the hands and, and it's just like, it's really not that difficult. It's, it's pretty, Mm-mm. you know, uh, nerve wracking to say maybe like when yeah. I first pulled the engine, I was like, Oh, everything Uh-oh. was just like <laughs> everywhere. I was like, Oh man, here we go. And it's, but it, it's just like a giant Lego kit. I played what, did totally you play with the Erector set when you were a kid. Yep. I was definitely more on the Lego side, but I did yep. do a few Erector set stuff. Uh, but yeah, I totally agree. It's just, just re- take pictures. Remember where you pulled stuff off of and, you know, take your time. If you rush through it, it's gonna you're gonna run into problems. But if you take your time and look at the stuff and read, you know, I, yeah. I reading is pretty valuable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's it was uh, I, it's funny because I've used the Haynes manual from pretty much the beginning, and the, mm-hmm. the things I kind of worked on at the beginning were were pretty basic, so it was quite easy. But and when I was doing the engine, I was like, it literally like has step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, and so on of yeah. how to rebuild the engine. I was like, well, this is fantastic. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was that like, kind I of stuff that. just doesn't exist now. Like you, uh, you find a Haynes manual on a, two, a 2020 Tacoma. No, I don't think so. Oh yeah. No way. <laughs> It'll say uh, how to build the engine, uh, buy a new one. <laughs> buy a new one. Bring it to the dealer. <laughs> Bring it to the dealer. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Um, I want to backtrack here and go back to, um, you got your car in Canada. I want to know a little bit, did you drive it back? Did you mention that? Did you, how did you, how did you find it back then? Was it like a, uh, I know many, many had classified ads and all that kind of stuff, but how did you find it? Yeah. Back then it was, um, it was still, you know, internet era. So it wasn't like, it wasn't too long ago, but it was back in, I would say, the classified and forum, like, heyday. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so most of the things you found were on forums or on, on classified somewhere on the internet. And this mini was listed on Mini Mania's classifieds. It had, like, two and a half pictures. Like, there was barely <laughs> anything about it, but it was, like, 1960 mini and then $1,500. And I'm like, yes. So and, like, good. I messaged the guy the, the moment I saw it. I didn't even have the money available for me yet. Like, I, like I'm just like, I got to figure out how to get this. Yeah. And by some stroke of luck, like he said, you were the first one to message. And so, you know, I'm going to honor the price that, that was listed here. But there were like six or seven other people who messaged him just after me. Uh, um, some like willing to drive from Canada to bring it all, the, bring it back. And, I'm sorry, from Mexico all the way to bring it back from wow. Canada. Wow. And... It just wild. So that guy definitely went out on a limb for me. He def- probably could have made a fair bit more than he made selling it to me. But yeah. my dad and I basically, we lived in Charlotte, North Carolina then too. And so 
we rented a U-Haul trailer. He had a 2008 Xterra. Um, and we slapped the trailer on the back and drove straight to Barry, like over a weekend, like there and back, no sleeping, no, well, I slept. My dad loves to tell this <laughs> story because, yeah, yeah. I drove like probably 30, 40%. I had full intentions of doing way more than that, but then we got the car. I crashed in the in the seat and he just never woke me up. He just kept driving. And then all of a sudden we were back in Charlotte. But yeah, it was an experience. My dad and I really enjoyed that. Wow. How long is a, a drive from Charlotte? That's one yeah. way. It was 14 hours. Oh yeah. So you guys so, booked it. Yeah. We just were wow. like there and back. Wow. It was in May too. It was like right around my birthday at the time. And uh, there was like still snow on the ground in Canada, which was just like so crazy to me because, you know, it's May. <laughs> right. Charlotte's like getting warm. Right, um, right, right. No. He, he's like, oh, yeah, we just put the snowmobiles away. What? <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Well, for those that don't know, let's uh, let's kind of dive into your specific mini, uh, Bad Wolf. Mm-hmm. And I yep. want to I want to kind of talk about some of the unique uh, mods that you've done and kind of the different iterations that have happened over the years. Yeah, yeah, I um, yeah, I I can kind of just get started from the beginning if you'd like me to, if that works. Oh yeah, yeah I love. I okay. just want I want the whole history. The whole hi- okay. <laughs> There's a I'm, well li- that that might take several <laughs> podcasts. If again, if you guys yeah. don't watch, you know, I'll bridge been, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, like, we could cut some stuff out. <laughs> yeah. Um, it has been through a lot of iterations. So basically, uh, the best way I've kind of started describing it is it's been my test bed for experimentation and learning about different things in the mini, but also different concepts in like cars in general, especially more recently. Um, but first time I got it, it was like, let's restore it. Let's get it running and, and cool and good. And so had dual HS2s, had 1293 in it. We kind of just did a light rebuild, like re- refresh that was what my budget allowed at the time i was in college so i barely had any money mm-hmm. and um and then we just kind of like pieced it together over the course of a year and boom you have a pretty much uh standard style mini with dual hs2s 1275 fun fun car and i drove it that way for probably three or four years um quite a bit too it was like uh borderline um daily driver i still had a secondary car that i could jump into if i needed to i at this point in my life i would definitely not recommend only only owning a mini um but you know (laughs) (laughs) to each their own uh and then from there i got the bug for more power and so then i took the engine back out uh did some head mods i put a a single hio 44 which i ultimately ended up going back to dual hs2s just because i something about them just really spoke to me but um rebuilt it once then for um more power through the head just better flowing um and slapped it back together it was actually triggered by an oil pressure failure my oil pressure relief valve got stuck open and destroyed all the bearings in the car that's what kind of prompted it and so that was kind of first two rebuilds hang on one second sorry i'm getting an amazon delivery did not expect that to happen (laughs) (laughs) we're 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 rolling people we're not cutting this out this is live from classic mini diy garage (laughs) is it going to be a mini part thank you (laughs) yes it was it is a mini part let's go (laughs) We knew it. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it, nine, nine times out of ten, it's a mini part. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I completely forgot that I was getting delivered today. <laughs> Poor Amazon driver. I don't know if you saw him. He's like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, he, he was like, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> you brought him on. Oh, oh. Talked to me. Hey, you I should have. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. Man. But yeah, after that, I kind of drove it a little bit further, a little bit longer, and decided, okay, I want more power. That's always the driving factor for these these things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I'm going to supercharge the car. And uh, got one of the VMAX supercharge kits um, with the Weber. I initially started with fuel injection, then went to the Weber. Never really was happy with the way that it behaved. Um, I think it would have been something that we could have gotten really nice had I lived closer to Stuart, who owns the company, 
Mm-hmm. Wonderful guy. I cannot express to you guys how awesome he is. Um, but had I been able to get it over to him to have him tune it, I think we would have gotten it awesome. But nobody here could figure it out, yeah, including what was myself. What going on with it? I, I remember the kind of whole uh, saga on YouTube. Um, yeah. What was, it just there was drivability or... Yeah, yeah, it was, um, so for good drivability, you wanted the smaller Weber or um, the fuel injected setup. And so he, the way that Stuart does a lot of the fuel injection setups on his superchargers is he has a Holly um, EFI unit, and they're like all encapsulated in one thing. So you, it's almost like bolt on, plug up a few more wires, and you have fuel injection. Um, and the system itself is really great, but um, it's meant to be downdraft. And he has it on the side. And so never could get that quite operating the way it should. And so he's like, well, do you want to just try the Weber instead? And I said, sure, let's swap to a carb. Um, So he swapped to a carb, a DCOE 40. um, And just the Webers are awesome, especially when they're naturally aspirated. But when you're running that fuel through the supercharger, those those, um, uh, corkscrews are, you know, they're chopping up all that fuel as it's going in and then getting that mixture right, especially low down at idle is just quite honestly, one of the most difficult things I've ever had to try and do. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And so we've tried like different idle jets, different main jets, different this, different Venturis. I mean, I'm telling you, we spent the poor Stuart uh, probably was sick of me. He had me on WhatsApp and we were like, I probably used days of his time, days of his time. And he was a trooper. Um, but, and that's why I was saying he's such a good guy. Um, but at that point I was like, you know, I really want a reliable running car. Um, and I'm not kind of meeting that goal, uh, with a supercharger. And then that's when I took the next step to go to turbocharged. (laughs) So I'll pause there. I thought you were about to say something. (laughs) Yeah, no, I was, I was, I mean, my only thought on that was when you were going through that, I was like, man, I feel like there would be a lot of people in the U S that run the Weber that was would be able to help, but it it was mm-hmm. the supercharger threw it off, right? Because I'm sure there's yep. not that many that do a classic A series engine with a supercharger and a mm-hmm. Weber, so that probably just made it super yeah. difficult. That was what, definitely the the factor that that broke the the whole stuff. Because there were are people near me who are very comfortable with Webers. There's a, right. a Jaguar tuning place. There's a few places that can do Webers, and they've got this, and they're like bro i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so then you went yeah. to turbo and uh you're mm-hmm. kind of still tinkering with it it's up and running but you're you can't yes. you can't leave it alone huh i can't leave it alone that's that's a moral of my life um but <laughs> uh yeah first went turbo carb awesome like it is a great setup like a turbo carb good old-fashioned raw power um ran about 12 psi at boost um, got around 180 horsepower with that. Um, and then I didn't necessarily want more power, um, but I wanted to finally and like really truly experience fuel injection because um, I like the kind of blend of technology with older engines and the, those old concepts. And so mm-hmm. then I'm like, well, let's let's fuel inject this. And then I'm like, well, let's make our own throttle body. And then I slowly, you know, and I'm like, let's make a throttle body. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And so now I have a fully fuel injected mini turbocharged. It runs really well. I'm so happy with it. Like right now I could stop, could stop and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it'd be a perfect car. It, it, there are tons of little things, but it could be a really good running car for a long time right now. But... But, but Amazon just came with parts. But Amazon just came. Um, <laughs> they uh, no, but the the next rendition is definitely going to be. I I have said this about the other ones, but I actually like truly mean it at my core. This is going to be the last time I'm going to like redo the car um, because it's going to be a big redo. Uh, lots and lots of changes. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. <laughs> awesome. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I've loved watching every bit of it. Um, I recently saw, uh, you know, obviously your turbo build and then Jet Motors has his mm-hmm, little turbo mm-hmm. kit. And I was like, hmm, interesting yep. turbo. Yep. It, seems, it seems like Plants a lot of the fun. the seed. Yeah. It is. I always like that um, uh, Stuart's uh, uh, 
supercharger kit always looks super fun too but um mm -hmm. yeah so oh, one thing about that kit that was so nice and about superchargers in general is the power is just so linear it like right. just it's like an na car but but boosted like i, the, I it, well i you had punch a, it i had the early first mini um uh, mm -hmm. BMW Mini that had the supercharger. You had the 07. I had like a 02, 03 or whatever when it came out, okay. which was the supercharged one. And I know what you're talking. I mean, obviously a different engine, but I did really, Same really, concept. really like. Yeah, I really like that supercharger versus the later turbos. Yep, yep. It, it, there's there's nothing quite like pushing your foot down and having the power instantly start to get delivered, but also exponentially growing because of that supercharger. Um, the turbo is different, you know, you can mimic a lot of the supercharger behavior with a, with a turbo with like a, um, electronic boost controller and things like that. But at the end of the day, you still have to generate that, that, um, spool for the turbo to get the boost right. to start to come on. So right. trade off yeah. spoolie boy. So, yep. um, I think again, I think I heard this before, but, um, I just real quick, bad wolf. Mm -hmm. Was that from doctor who I've never watched doctor yes. who, but I think I remember, was it an episode or was it a character? What was it? Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like a theme, uh, that was happening through, uh, it's for, for people who are doctor who fans, the David Tennant era of doctor who, um, with Rose, uh, it's actually been so long since I've seen those episodes that I don't fully remember what bad wolf means, which probably just could tanked my doctor who creds. But, um, yeah, my wife knows that I really love doctor who it's been like kind of, it's an acquired taste. Not everybody loves it. I know. But, um, the, uh, throughout that whole period and she's like, you know, you love doctor who the car is kind of this bluish color, like doc, the TARDIS. And so she's like, bad wolf would be a great name. She surprised me with a license plate, which, is the original one is up on my wall now um i have a new plate because the old one started to kind of deteriorate and i didn't want it to fall off one day but <laughs> um but then yeah the name just kind of stuck and it just kind of fits um i don't know if i'll keep the the name when i do the next bin, big rendition because i'm like stripping it down to body and painting it and like it's gonna be a different car so mm -hmm. i don't know I feel like it should keep the name. When are you revealing but, this? Um, probably in the new year. I can give you some details, though. It's not. It's like kind of a secret, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's like a pseudo secret. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're. I'm gonna pull the car off the road. It's actually probably gonna be pretty soon. I know this is like people are gonna just like what the hell, call yeah, You gotta Stop keep it. the YouTube channel coming, right? <laughs> Well, so it's like, I, that, that's kind of in the back of my mind, but it's all this stuff that's like piled up. 12 years is a long time with a car. And right. like, there's rust, there's problems. The doors sag because of the external hinges, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to paint it green. Um, Willow Good green is going to be... Uh, I did see that. Ah, now I know. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. It, it, it like, it got, it, it planted that seed in my brain. I'm like, that's the color. That, it needs to be that. Um Fantastic. But, For people that don't know, Willow Green is like kind of a really light, um, like a vintage green, beautiful color. Go check yes. that one out. Yeah. The, um, if you're looking for an example of what my car is probably going to look very similar to is the Swift Tune car. Um, they, I think they have a few of them, Willow 1, 2, 3. Uh, but it's going to probably be relatively similar to those because I just I can't get enough of those. Every yeah. time I see them, I just sit there and stare at them on my Great phone. Great look. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be like fully drive by wire. Um, so it'll have like cruise control. It'll be powered by Haltech ECUs and all sorts of fun stuff. And I am going to keep it turbo, but I'm going to run my whole own wiring harness. Like it's going to be a big project, but it's, I feel like it's going to be the, the cherry on top of the car that I say, this is, this is it. This is the end of this, this car's journey in terms of mods. I think it deserves it. That's going to be an awesome project. And if I picture it in my head, it's going to look awesome. That's going to be cool. Yeah. Real cool. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Is it to going it to too. keep, I don't know if you can share this, but is it going to keep the a series, uh, turbo? hundred percent. Okay. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 
You I, had me I'm scared not... that you were going electric or something. I was going <laughs> to... No, 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 no. I, I think it would be cool to have an electric Mini, but I don't want this one to be that one. I, okay. right. I, I like the A-Series a lot. It's unreliable. It's kind of <laughs> crappy, but like... It's what just, you talk? it's fantastic. I mean, it's great, but it's also bad. You, you got to admit, it's like both. <laughs> Somehow it, it bridges. It's like Somehow both it's ends both. of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, it's got to, it's got to stay a series. Um, but it'll stay turbocharged. It'll stay the a series. I'm not. I think the Honda conversions and like other big engine conversions are cool. Um, but I don't know. There's just something about the BMC stuff that when I just, was. When you finished oh. that uh, dyno video and uh, you made, uh, you know, however much, uh, 180, 200, what was it? 200, 204. 204, yeah. yeah. And I was laughing. I immediately <laughs> went to my little group. I was like, you bitches with all your Hondas not even making 200. And Cole just smashed it with a freaking A-series. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, granted, it, it's it, it was a process, but uh, uh, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. It is possible. Yep, yep. It, it's funny because I, we made that power. I turned it down a little bit for, for regular driving because, like, I'm not trying to demolish the engine. And like, <laughs> we got to be realistic here. Two hundred some horsepower in an A series is really hard on some of those drop gears and like some of the internals. So yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. As cool as it is, I can't run it that way all the time. But <laughs> that's what the ECU is for. I just swap a tune when I want the high power, and then I swap it back when I don't. <laughs> that's, yeah, well, that's cool. Instead of tinkering with the the carb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is its own experience. I, I, carbs are great. I yeah. genuinely say believe that. I agree. I agree. I want to kind of get into a little bit. I know um, you've done a few uh, pretty cool events that I'm a little jealous of. Uh, I think <laughs> in your area, you've done, uh, mm -hmm. is it minis in the mountains or something like that? Yeah. So or the the in, group is called uh, Classic Minis United. Um, that's right, that's is right. CMU is the abbreviation. They are... Um, Last I, I heard, I don't know if this is still the case, but as, as last I heard, there's the largest um, classic mini group in North America. Um, it, but I don't, you know, the, the West Coast, East Coast, there's usually kind of like this fluctuation between the right. two, and they're always like, who's got more people? Yeah, um, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, if you're, now I know you're in California, it's a long drive. Is is a really long drive. I just um, drove to but, Idaho and back, so I'm not I'm not scared of drives. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, then you need to come to the next one. Uh, I don't know the dates yet, but I imagine it's probably going to be sometime in the middle of like middle to end of next year. So like probably usually they're in the fall or the spring, and so I think fall is when we're doing it next year. Um, but it's a, like it's all driving for like five days. And so we just, we, uh, I don't know what your language filter is on here. So sorry if I, I, I have um, it as explicit. So, okay, cool. <laughs> just in so, case. Yeah. Yeah. So basically we take our minis and we just fucking rip on the mountains in North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, Kentucky. So obviously we've got the Appalachian mountains. Um, yeah, yeah. and Oh my God. It's just, it's so fun. It's a driver's show is the best way to put it yeah there's some amazing driving roads in the united states like i was just mm -hmm. over in the sawtooth mountains in idaho and oh, it man. was just, it was it was empty and it was just all of us uh tons of porsches classic cars there's alpha but jesus christ the the, the road <laughs> was just, like, oh it was just it was just it, it, insane it was insane yeah so yeah, i have so. I've only seen pictures of those areas, but it's like, we are so, you're, you're totally right. We are so lucky to be in the U S it's like we have, and we have access to also even more in Canada, the Pacific Northwest, yeah. Yeah. like it just so many options. The only, the only hard part is just getting to them, but it's not mm -hmm. even that hard, you know? Yeah. Well, where I live, I mean, I drive 10 minutes, uh, in inland and there's this I mean, short, but there's some really cool little canyon passes. And then if I want to drive uh, 20 minutes, I'm up in Ojai driving uh, 
hour plus long twisty amazing road oh, again and it's just yeah there's some amazing roads within an hour of me that that's uh, really that's really cool i would yeah. say the closest ones to to me are probably probably about an hour plus to get to the the really good ones that are in like appalachia like mm -hmm. near asheville um, boone those areas um but you know obviously the kind of like uh that area is called high country i'm in the low country and then there's kind of like this in between state i don't know that they call it mid country but <laughs> uh, there's some pretty good roads out there too but if i want i want some really you know major ripping roads you got to get up to the mountains so how was your drive or uh experience rather in uh imm 60 in england Oh yeah. Is that what it so, was? It was 60, right? I think it was 60. Yeah. It was a round number. It was like big deal. I think of the, yeah. Cause it was the mini 60 we had in, in the U S yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, that was, a unreal experience. Honestly, Alex Toon, um, who was also another mini probably celebrity is the way I would describe him too. <laughs> um, he's a, a great guy and we kind of like, he had, I had friends that knew him that, like Tom Shorick and and uh, and some of his other friends over in Manchester, they're like, hey, you know, you're coming to IMM. Do you want to borrow my car? And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> are you are you fucking around with me right now? Like, what? <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, and so he, I like graciously i mean he put he took a huge risk by doing that which i cannot uh, uh, say how much i appreciate uh, him for that but he loaned me his automatic 1275 um spi mini it was so cool because uh it was one of his multiple minis uh he has eight different ones now i don't think he even he doesn't have this blue one anymore that he loaned me yeah. but um it's really cool. He doesn't have the use of his legs and he had hand controls in it. And so I got to like experience using hand controls. He's like, this is how you brake. This is how you accelerate. Um, and we drove from Manchester all the way down to Bristol, um, which distance wise is not very far um, by, by American standards, at least what we're used to. Mm -hmm. um, but it takes a lot longer because the roads are smaller, you, you know, slower speeds in a lot of those places. And mm -hmm. William Murphitt, another YouTuber, yep. um, planned the route. And we kind of took Manchester, which is kind of like middle-ish of um, mainland England, um, to the left into Wales. And then we went down Wales and I got to experience like Wales is very, pretty mountainous, like and so we got to kind of like drive through the mountains of Wales and experience that. And like, it was a really, really cool, cool, um, drive. My dad came with me as well. And we, uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. I think the whole drive actually took us like nine hours. Um, but, wow. uh, it was, it was just, just because way? we were kind of, yeah. Yeah. Cause wow. it, it, it was because we were kind of dicking around. Like we would yeah. like, drive a little bit and then we'd stop and then like everyone would get out and just kind of wander around for it was a group of like that's what makes it fun exactly exactly like none of us were complaining when we were tired when we got to bristol um but n no complaints and then on the way back we kind of just shotgunned up to manchester because i had to catch a flight but right. um yeah it was wow. a cool trip yeah, no that i want to go to uh, one of those that's uh, on a bucket list either that or <clears throat> excuse me or like uh london the brighton always looks fun yes a bunch of those yeah yes. they have a lot of cool ones or well uh, mini day in japan also looks super fun yes so i i don't know a whole lot about the the japanese i think i've seen didn't uh steve's and motor code they went they had a video about going to that it was one of their early videos yeah that was um, super cool it looked really neat i so we're going to imm italy this this coming year 2023 um and i won't i probably won't be driving we're just gonna be flying in and and kind of just going to the event uh, for that one but germany is after that in 2024 uh a lot of people are kind of holding out for germany because it's going to be a little bit closer to the alps um apparently so if you're looking for one to come to germany would be good 
Well, uh, listen. Or Italy. <laughs> great segue into Italy because I wanted to ask you about your Italian citizenship because I'm part Italian. Oh. I'm half Italian as well. Yeah. Uh, and my, you know, my father's full blooded and my grandparents came really? from Italy. And uh, yeah, I've been there a couple times, but I haven't been since I, you know, been an adult. So that might be when I would come. But I want to hear about your experience of getting, I know it's not many really, but uh, Italian uh, citizenship. Yeah. That was super cool. I saw that. Yeah, it it's a, I, I don't know, I like kind of doing stuff like this, even though it's a little bit like logistics heavy and bureau, bureaucracy heavy, um, be, but I don't know why, it's just kind of how I am, but the, um, it, I, if you have direct family bloodlines to Italy, people who have emigrated into the U.S., um, then like you can verify that they immigrated in. Um, you generally do have an avenue for getting Italian citizenship. There hmm. are a litany of different like cases that like either qualify you or disqualify you. Um, but generally speaking, if it's your father's side um, that immigrated or your father did, so your father, grandfather, great grandfather, and then there's some cases for your great grandmother and great grandmother, but normally it's from the male side. If they immigrated in, didn't renounce their citizenship for their Italian citizenship, then generally speaking, you're eligible for it um, as a, uh, a blood relative, a blood descendant, because um, Italy kind of observes, you know, the U.S. is like, are you born in the U.S.? Or were you born in the U.S.? Okay, you're a citizen. Right. Whereas it, Italy's like, are you blood related to somebody who was born or who is Italian? then you qualify for it. So hmm. like the last Italian citizen that I had in my lineage was my great grandfather. So on my mom's side, it was a very, very niche case that I was able to get it, but it worked out. Basically my mom is not an Italian citizen. Well, she is now, but she wasn't when we started this. Um, then my grandmother on her side was not an Italian citizen but her dad was, and they immigrated in like the 1900s. Wow, and so okay. I had to get birth, death, and marriage certificates for everybody between my great grandfather all the way down <laughs> to me. And wow. as you can imagine, that takes some time, but it's doable. Yeah. Um, and then once you get them all, you go to the Italian consulate that's near you, minus Philadelphia, and present your case to the Italian citizenship board and they basically review everything, make sure the dates are right, see that things line up and that nobody renounced their citizenship. And then uh, the whole process probably took about two and a half, three years, start to finish. Wow. If you, yeah, if you speed you run it, you, it. yeah, yeah, it was, it was a process. If you speed run it, you probably could get it done in like a year and a half if you're like really buckled down on it. Right. Um, but yeah, then once they approve it, once they see it, they put it in the system, takes another six months, and then you go get your passport photo taken, another six months, and boom, you have a passport, and you're an wow. Italian. <laughs> That's super cool. I'll have to look into it with my dad. I know I know both, both grandparents, um, at least somewhere along the line, there's a lot of kids. That's a lot of, yeah. a lot of birth, death, and uh, marriage yes. certificates, but... It's only uh, wow. the primary ones, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that uh, that's it, super cool. I saw that and I was like, I have to ask about that. That's very interesting to me. Yeah. Well, if you ever go down the route and you want to do it, let me know. I'm happy to help you out with it. Um, I can kind of like, there were some really good resources I used uh, and some really great tools that saved me a lot of money and a lot of time. Um, so yeah, just hit me up if you decide to, to do it. Um, but on the upside, my mom is an Italian citizen now as well, um, but my wife and my dad are not. They don't immediately qualify. It's mm. kind of interesting, actually. Um, they can live there with me or with my mom. I was going to say, because you're married, you could, you can kind of, mm -hmm. hmm, interesting. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. We'll have to see if I qualify. Dad, if you're listening, let's check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, uh, let's see. Next on the docket, Cole, just to kind of round oh it God. back to minis here. Um, I just wanted to see if you had any advice for somebody that is getting into minis. I know that uh, we kind of talked about your history 
of how you mm-hmm. just kind of dove in, but did you have any advice for somebody that just gets a, a beater car like we did and needs to fix it up other than mm-hmm. go to classic mini DIY on YouTube, <laughs> Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Et cetera. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's a one piece of advice is just watch my video. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, 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 no. I, uh, I think that there are some real, and you know, what's great is I think I, when I started the channel, it was, there were not a lot of other mini channels and now there are so many great resources, HRE, um, in Ireland, t- just incredible. Steve's to motor car. They haven't made a lot of like old mini videos in a little while, but they have some really good ones. Um, and, but all of the kind of YouTube stuff aside, like I just got a mini, what do I do? Um, one thing I would say is that when you first get a mini, uh, if the, if you have the ability budget wise, lifestyle wise to have a secondary car, um, at least at the beginning, it's something I would strongly recommend. Um, it just so that you can take the pressure off of like, this car has to work so I can drive and get to work and do these things. And it lets you enjoy it more. Um, and you know, obviously that's not an option for everybody, but, um, if it is for you, definitely I recommend doing that. Um, and then also the engines are, uh, more reliable than people online make them sound. I, I, I am even guilty of it. Like literally earlier in this podcast of saying (laughs) that the a series is crappy, but like, it's also incredibly reliable, uh, as long it just with a different lens on it um it it, it's not reliable in the way that a toyota corolla is reliable but like it can take a lot of abuse it can probably take a lot more abuse than you think it can um and like don't be afraid to break it things in the engine generally are not irreplaceable unless you have like a super fancy cooper s like you have um those are a little bit harder to replace the insides (laughs) for but um parts are available, things are available and like, just have fun with it. Um, that would be my biggest, biggest thing. And then change out all of your fuel lines to ethanol safe fuel lines. (laughs) That could be, I don't know if mine has that or not. I just send it. (laughs) Yeah. I like the advice though, because I, when I got mine, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to fix it and drive it. I had another car, so I didn't, wasn't worried about that, but, uh, I'm pretty sure I drove, with like a spun bearing for several years before I pulled that engine in it yeah. always had fuel pressure. It never left me stranded. One time I accidentally like kicked the wires and it like came loose and I just jiggled it eventually after about an hour of messing around, jiggled it and it fired right back up. Never. Just, oh my God. <laughs> keeps on going, baby. Keeps on going. That's exactly <laughs> right. And see, that's, that's the way you need to like, they, they beg to be driven. If you let them sit, that's when they have problems. But yeah. if you drive it, and run it and use it it's going to last a lot longer they love but, it they love it yeah the easiest thing to replace though when you first get it is like the rubber stuff though the, oh, yeah. that and that'll keep you running much longer yeah that's much kind of longer. a necessity because it's probably already fallen apart yeah yep <laughs> <laughs> so cole i don't know if you listened to the other podcast but i'm trying a little something called the patty probe need some okay, theme, music, okay. theme music for it. You know, actually, I really wanted to call it the Quizagonus because that, um, I'm drawing a blank on his name on Instagram, has like a Friday, Friday yeah, Quizagonus. Have you seen that? Yeah, I think it's Team Ballylock Classics. Is it? I don't uh, remember. Oh, it's so funny. Maybe. He zooms in on like a classic mini part and and everyone has to guess what, <laughs> what it is. is. Yeah, he's like, piece of crap is always the right answer. <laughs> but anyways, I had to be creative and, and rename it because I didn't want to uh, copyright in French. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So I got the Patty Probe, you know. I like it. So these can be, uh, <laughs> these can be, it's mysterious. These can be rapid fire. You can elaborate if you want. Um, but okay. In okay. no particular order. What's your favorite mini variant? Mini variant, definitely the mini pickup. 100%. Like, it's, if Alex Toon is listening to this, he's probably laughing his ass off right now because he always gives me shit about having, I gotta have my pickup because then I'm American. But, <laughs> like, it, it, it's just, they're so cool. They're so cool. That's they 100%. Cool. 
They are cool. Like, I mean, I mean, it's really, really funny in the United States because you can park next to a bit actual pickup. Yes. Even your Tacoma, they're like not big for American standards, but it right. would just demolish a mini pickup. It would. It would. Ironically, that mini pickup has a bigger bed than my Tacoma, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, everyone, car problems. go check out the the previous episode uh, with uh, Ricky No and and all the uh, follow him yes. and check out everything he hauls in his mini pickup. <laughs> He's like an inspiration to me. <laughs> he is. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. He drives that thing and hauls it. Everything is so funny. Oh. Um, how we, we you know i'm just gonna ask it how many minis do you currently own how many have you mm -hmm. owned so classic minis only yes. one how many do i own right now only one um and uh i'm even though i'm a mini guy i'm not a have a lot of mini guys uh, or have a lot of minis guy uh that's hard to say probably yeah. not the right way to say it but um yeah i like having one project i don't know it, uh, maybe having one additional one. I wouldn't mind it, obviously, a mini pickup and doing something really cool and unusual with that. But, you know, just one, one and one. <laughs> All right. How many people have you fit inside your mini? Oh, that's a good one. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think about back kind of earlier when I had it and I drove it to work one day, a bunch of people were like, let's go for a ride. And I was like, well, okay. Um, you know, you, you asked for it. And I think the most I had in there was six. Oh, it was, dang. yeah. It, and it, it was, we drove for like around the block and we had to go back cause the, the, it was like scraping everything. It was just too much weight in it, <laughs> but yeah, it was like six adults. That was rough. <laughs> wow. What? Four in the back? You have four in the back, two in the front, and the, the two kind of like in the center were kind of like melting over into the shift area, um, so that was challenging, but um, yeah. That's good. A-series, Honda Swap, or other? Oof. All of the above. Like, it, none of, like A-series is always like top in my heart, but um, there are room for other things. Uh, the Honda is very cool. I think if I could do any engine swap, like, uh, I think it would be a Ford EcoBoost. I really want to do like the three cylinder turbocharged EcoBoost. Yeah, I, I'm surprised I don't see too many of those. And I always thought that would be a cool one or even the, yeah. the new mini nowadays, uh, the BMW has a three cylinder that might fit. I don't yeah. know. It, the, the, uh, we need to wait till there's a few more wrecked ones and start pulling some out of the, out of the That's... junkyard. Seriously, but seriously. It, it would be cool. I, I, yeah, I'm, I think there's tons of room for other engines. I think it's super fun, super cool. And, uh, but yeah, all of the above a series priority. All right. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite mini modification, either one that you've done or one that you want to do? Yeah. Um, I think, can I have two different answers? Sure. Okay. Okay. There's no so rules favorite... in Patty Probe. Okay. 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 Um, so favorite modification, um, I think is, and it's super, I think it's a really reasonable modification and it completely changes your ability to drive the car and get it running right. And it's a, a, uh, air fuel ratio gauge, get like a bung welded onto your exhaust and like, just get that information flowing. Um, so many people are like, the car is running like garbage. You know, there's something wrong with it. It's, it's, there's, there's, you know, probably big issues and like nine times out of 10, it's like running too lean or too rich. Mm -hmm. And like having that air fuel gauge, it, it opens up the door to knowledge and seeing, oh, I just need to tweak the carb a little bit and turn it up a little bit and it's fine. Um, that would be my like top mod, like. And there's so many, it's tough to choose, but I think that's the top one for me. And then the one that I want to do is down the vein of like fuel injection and the drive by wire setup, um, is something that I want to do on my car. Uh, so you have like smooth, perfect idle and like 
can control everything electronically. I just find that very, very cool. So um, that's the one I'm looking forward to doing because I am going to be doing that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. 10 inch, 12 inch, or 13 inch? 10, 100%, all day, every day. <laughs> No, yeah, no, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I agree. Ten no inch, hesitation. Inch, no, ten inch club, baby. So yep. uh, with the ten inch club, uh, you can find a plethora of wheels on ClassicMiniDIY.com wheel dictionary. What is yes. your favorite wheel model? Ooh, man, that's tough. So there is. God, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember the name of them now. The, it's a Japanese your... wheel. Okay. Uh, of course, all the Japanese wheels are like the best looking ones. And what are they called? I can't SSR, remember. SSR, the Meshies, Watts. I'm going to have to pull it up here. Um, the it, It's like a, a, it's kind of akin to a, um, a mini light, but it's a little bit more stylized than the mini Wat, light is. Watanabe's? maybe yeah, I think maybe I think they have like right. a yellowish a tint in their logo um uh, i'm googling right now everybody i don't know what their logo no like. valtane valtane oh, vartan hmm i don't know if i know that one I'm they, sure there's a couple of them that are available um yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure you've seen it um david anley on classic oh, Japan sells yes. them a lot yeah those are real cool those that's real probably cool. my favorite there's a few companies um one that's based out of thailand that has a few of them that i've been like f flirting with getting but god they're so expensive yeah like, just like six grand for at to my door it would end up being like six grand and i'm like i can't spend yeah, that much on wheels. that's rough because most mini wheels aren't that expensive with tires you're it's less than buying tires on a you know modern car so <laughs> right right yeah that's hard well, to justify when everything else can you could be done for pretty affordable yep um, yep all right this is one of my uh one of my favorites actually okay if your mini could talk what do you think it would say and then sub question to that is what kind of accent would it have and what actor would you choose to voice it? Oh, that's good. This is a really good question. I, I like this. Um, the, I think it would say, please stop taking me apart. Just stop. <laughs> like, let me be. Um, I think is, is the phrasing that it would use. Uh, and then... <clears throat> Let's see this. So, what accent would it have? Um, hmm. I've always, I've always thought of it of having a Scottish accent. I don't know why. It, uh, it has nothing to do. With, I'm not Scottish. Like the car is obviously British, British Canadian even. British Canadian. And, <laughs> uh, and then I feel like it would have a Scottish accent in the tone of Owen Wilson. <laughs> i was i was hoping you're gonna say sean connery <laughs> oh <laughs> no that's way too cool i don't think yeah, my car is cool. like a. no 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 i don't think my car is like cool exactly i think it's like uh it's a little easy going <laughs> yeah a little nerdy <laughs> uh all right the last patty probe question what is the most pain in the ass job on the mini oof there are a few really bad ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the the worst one is steering rack while the car, <laughs> while you have the engine and subframe in the car. Yeah. Like, hands down. That is brutal. I remember brutal. watching that video on your YouTube. And <laughs> when I had my engine out, I was trying to replace the U-bolts. Um, so yes. the engine was out, and it was difficult just with the subframe. I can't imagine with the engine in it. Oh. I honestly, at this point, I think it would be easier to just take the engine out and like, it's totally doable without doing it, but I just, right. I don't want to suffer that much while working on the car. Um, yeah. that's probably up there. There's a few others, but that one's hitting top of mind. 
That was a yeah. That is a difficult one for sure. For sure. <laughs> well, Cole, I appreciate you being on. It was a lovely conversation. We'll have to do it again sometime. Um, yeah. We'll let everyone know where to find you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any, um, any plugs well, or anything? Yeah. Primary place, obviously, is YouTube, Classic Mini DIY. Um, I have a few other places, obviously, Instagram. Um, I'm kind of on Facebook, not really. Uh, but those are the, the three good places. And then check out um, ClassicMiniDIY.com for uh, technical information. It's all free. Don't charge for it. Um, merch, and then, merch. yep, MerchStore.ClassicMiniDIY.com. We're starting to stock a ton of new like resto mod focused oem plus parts so um definitely check it out i think they're all really reasonably priced for what they are too i don't like to gouge prices definitely yeah no you got tons of parts on there too that you're coming out Mm -hmm. with and you just came out the throttle body Mm -hmm. uh, which is super cool so awesome cool stuff Um, all right, cool. I appreciate you on. We'll uh, talk soon. The last thing I want to end this with, I hope, I don't know if we can do it in sync, but at least okay. I want you to do it, yeah. is I want I want you to give us the outro. Your, your uh, outro. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I do. I do. All right, here well, we go. It, it, it has been a pleasure being on this podcast, um, but you guys know the drill. Until next time, enjoy those minis. And motor on. on. Let's go!